Good evening. I'm going to talk this evening, which is being recorded just a little earlier than you'll be watching it, not very, very much earlier because I should be celebrating the evening mass. I'm going to talk about the feast day today in this diocese, which is that of St. John Wall, one of our English martyrs. I want to read you a bit about him before I um, talk about him. St. John Wall had many aliases, John Marsh, Francis Johnson, or Dormor, or Webb. Um, his religious name, actually, his name in religion as a Franciscan, was Joachim of St. Anne, OFM. Um, and he lived from 1620 to the uh, 22nd of August, 1679. 1679, was an English Catholic Franciscan friar who is honoured, of course, as a martyr. He served on the English mission in Worcestershire for 22 years before being arrested and executed at the time of the famous uh, Titus Oates alleged popish plot. Now then, he was born in Preston in Lancashire, the son of wealthy and staunch Catholics. His brother William was also a priest. He became a Benedictine monk. William was later arrested and condemned for being a priest, but was reprieved and survived. John Wall was sent when very young to the English college um, as the English government had spies and informers on the continent, Wall used the name John Marsh. He entered the English college in Rome um, on the 5th of November, 1641, and was ordained a Catholic priest on the 3rd of December, 1645. He was sent on the English mission on the 12th of May, 1648, under the aliases, uh, various aliases really, one of which was Francis Johnson. For several years, he said mass for recusant households in the area and, and he returned um, uh, to France on the 1st of January, 1651 and joined the Order of Friars Minor, the Franciscans, at St. Bonaventure's Friary, taking the name Friar Joachim of St. Anne. But he was soon named Master of Novices, serving in that office until 1656, when he returned to England under the name of Francis Webb and settled in Worcestershire. There he became a governor of the Royal Grammar School in Worcester. Father Wall usually made his home at Harvington Hall, that's the Harvington near Kidderminster, by the way, which had a number of priests' holes thought to be the work of St. Nicholas Owen. After 22 years of ministry to the Catholics of the area, he was apprehended in December of 1678 at Russia Court, Court near Bromsgrove, where the sheriff's man had come to seek a debtor. He was tendered the oath of supremacy, that's that the monarch is supreme not only in all things secular but in all things religious as well of course, a title which had been assumed by King Henry VIII, though it was modified by Queen Elizabeth to supreme lord and governor um, of the Church of England rather than supreme head, but nonetheless uh, the intention was the same. But he was tendered this oath of supremacy, which he didn't take, of course, and was committed to Worcester jail for refusing it. His trial was on the 25th of April, 1679. A man whose vices he had reproved bore testimony to his priesthood and he received sentence. He was then sent to London and four times examined 
by Oates, Bedlow and others in the hope of implicating him in the pretended plot, but was declared innocent of all plotting and offered his life if he would abjure his religion as a Catholic. He was brought back to Worcester and executed, as he, he refused to abjure it, of course, and executed on Red Hill on the 22nd of August, 1679. Wall was a much respected local figure and the crowd's reaction showed that their sympathies were entirely with him. Many of the onlookers who were mostly Protestants wept and the sheriff reportedly cried out, will this end popery? This is the way to make us all papists. John Wall was an outstanding academic, perhaps the most intellectually distinguished English Catholic priest of his generation. Anyway, he was hanged, drawn and quartered, and his quartered body was given to his friends and was buried in the cemetery adjoining the church of St. Oswald of Worcester while the head was taken to the Franciscan friary in France, to which the martyr belonged. Previously, his feast day was observed within the Franciscan order on the date of his death, but it has been celebrated on several other days as well, on several other days as well. He was an outstanding man, was John Wall. And we do well to reflect on these great martyrs of our Catholic history, particularly at the time of the revolution in religion, known as the Protestant Reformation in our country. He was a man of discipline, a man of piety, a man of learning, a man who knew what sacrifice and mortification was about, a man who took his Catholic faith seriously, as, of course, did all of those martyrs who shed their blood for Christ. All of those martyrs who shed their blood for Christ. He took all of this absolutely seriously. And so we ask his prayers today. Now, I said to the people at Broadway at Mass this morning, I'm not entirely convinced. In fact, I'm far from convinced that the modern church would produce the likes of St. John Wall or St. Ambrose Barlow or St. Edward Oldcorn or St. Anne Lyne or St. Margaret Clitheroe uh, or many of those English martyrs of the Reformation period and beyond. They had a, an understanding of the faith and an attachment to the faith, which sadly, for the most part, has disappeared now. And as the elderly, so to speak, um, drop off at the upper end of age, as we can see, there's, there's really not much coming through. Uh, nothing really that we can think of of the caliber of these great men and women who, who died for the faith and died horrible deaths as well. John Wall is an outstanding example. If ever you get the chance to visit Harvington Hall near Kidderminster, you should go and see some of our Catholic history there. I think many people have had a wander around, you know, the St. Oswald's Cemetery, such as it is, now in Worcester, you can still go to the site of the martyrdom, of course, in in Worcester. Um, but really, no one knows where his body was buried. It would have been in an unmarked grave anyway, because at the time, papists, as they were called, certainly wouldn't have had their graves marked in the what were then churchyards belonging to the reformed national um, community known as the, the Church of England. And so we really ought to be proud that the church has thrown up 
people like St John Wall and be saddened that uh, our own generation, sadly, and for some considerable time now, would appear to lack the zeal of these men and women who preferred death rather than to give up their Catholic faith, rather than give up their Catholic faith. Their witness really ought to spur the Catholics of this generation to greater zeal for the faith and the proclamation of the gospel, but I fear it won't. Uh, it certainly hasn't for a very long time. But you see, most of the values espoused by these martyrs, of whom John Wall is the example today, aren't there anymore. Piety, sacrifice, devotion, penitence, love of the mass, love of the Pope, love of the church, mortification, uh, an understanding that by mortification we, we grow in the faith as it were. None of these things would readily commend themselves. You want to talk about those things in most of our schools, um, secondary or otherwise. I've met very little idea what one was talking about, because these things have been soft peddled down through the age, certainly for 50 or 60 years um, in, in the catechesis and spirituality even of our parishes. And so I know, as I say, I mean, you know, I, I've given up worrying whether people like to hear this or not, but it is nonetheless true. Whereas previous generations threw up martyrs like St. John Wall, uh, I wouldn't have the greatest confidence that we would be able to do it in our own age, which is very sad and, and very worrying for the future. Because as I've said to you, as you know, people get older, uh, if we use the image of the boat going under, there's nothing to stop it sinking. Now, it doesn't mean the church is going to disappear. And I don't mean church buildings, but the church as an institution, as the mystical body of Christ, that, that cannot be destroyed. But the men of the caliber and witness, as I say, of John Wall, and Lyne, Margaret Clitheroe, and the like, I'm, I, I'm convinced that the present system uh, isn't it couldn't produce it, it wouldn't be able to produce them it, it would lack the the biting power as it were and in that sense of course as we know it, it isn't strong enough even at present to stand up against the secularism and the relativism but let us ask St John Wall tonight to pray for us that even though we all of us priests, people, religious, bishops, popes, perhaps lack the, the great discipline of people like St. John Wall. Nonetheless, by his prayers, we might have the grace to live up to Catholic truth and proclaim the Catholic faith, which is so necessary in our own age. You see, that is, that's what the future is going to hold. Not a sort of syrupy, fudgy, gooey, sickly, sweet mess that pleases no one because it tries to please everyone, but the full force of the gospel of Christ, which is enshrined in the teachings of our Holy Mother, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We couldn't have a better witness of it than St. John Wall. May he pray for us today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray that like St. John Wall, we would be faithful and not found wanting in our carrying of the cross, as the Gospel today reminded us, and in our adherence, total adherence to Catholic truth. You see, partial adherence, just being there and being loosely connected, it, it won't do in the end. We need the, the zeal of these English martyrs. Let's pray for all that. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this night be at my side, to light, to rule, to guard and guide. Amen. May the holy angels of God watch over you, our blessed lady, the Queen of Martyrs, St. John Wall and all the saints pray for you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Please do say a prayer for me. You might also say a prayer for the repose of the soul of Gordon Perry, one of our um, parishioners who departed this life uh, just a little while ago, um, now fortified by the sacraments and in the fullness of the faith of the church. Um, the Mass tonight, it, it would be for the Holy Souls, but I'll offer it for him tonight because he used to love to come to the old, the old Mass, so um, I'll offer it for him tonight. God bless you.